Hello everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am um, going to show you today something I've not really shown before. You guys have seen uh, I had uh, acquired some old overlock machines um, in North America. They're called sergers, especially the home domestic versions. This is an industrial serger. This is the Mero A-3DW-3. And that is the particular model that you're looking at here. It's uh, late 1940s, built right after the war, Second World War. And uh, anyway, I'm going to do a little demonstration. You can see uh, this particular machine spent a lot of its life in a in a mill. Excuse me, in a, a knitting sewing factory. And uh, I've been making some samples of it. You can see here uh, knits a lot of sportswear knitwear. Uh, they use surged edges because they allow for a lot more movement without the popping of a seam than say a traditional lock stitch sewing machine would. So I have here some, this is oil cloth. Um, someone has asked me to demonstrate the machine's ability to sew this material. Now this is um, oil cloth. It reminds me of uh, this is uh, lighter in weight than duck cloth. I remember buying luggage one time that was made of heavy canvas and was sealed with a wax. This is not a wax. This is actually using oil. And I, I'm i going to guess, I don't know enough about the fabric. I'm guessing maybe it is a cotton of some sort. It looks like it's a woven. And I don't know if oil soaked cloths are, uh, I don't know if it's an aesthetic thing or it could be because it gives some level of uh, water repellency. It's not going to be perfect, but anyway, uh, I thought that's actually kind of a neat material. I'm not uh, that familiar with oil cloth, but some of you may be. Anyway, we're going to uh, turn on our where is it? Our um, uh, clutch motor that this uh, machine runs on, and we will see how she works. Okay, so we'll be got the motor powered on. This is a, a clutch style motor. It is not a servo motor. Um, so we'll see what it what it has to say about this. This is two layers, by the way. And of course, um, unlike domestic lock stitch machines, uh, there is no lever for me to manually pick up. I do it with my foot. There's a foot pedal here, and you can see I can lift the the uh, the foot here. So I'm just going to set the fabric up like so and we will see what the machine will do with this particular material again two layers I hear the rattling of my thread stand there And I'm going slow, but then I can also pick up the speed if I want. And you'll notice, guys, as I sew, I'm not going to pull this off. I'm actually going to do what they call sewing off. Notice I'm keeping, I'm not cutting the thread here. I just wanted to see, this is the old thread, I'll cut there. It's nice to leave kind of a running tail on these machines. Uh, it prevents threads from coming loose and having to re-thread them. So let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to need to snug up my my uh, my thread stand, or better yet, throw off the motor a minute so I don't have to listen to that rattle while I talk to you guys. So here we go. This is two layers. Let's take a look. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay. Now, you can see on this edge, and you'll see on the back, let's see. Get a, go ahead, try to zoom in. I've got some good natural light here so we can take a look at the, um, at the stitches. This is a three thread machine. As you move up in the number of threads that sergers have, you will notice that, that um, you'll see uh, different stitch patterns. Now these machines come with the ability to change cam. So let me, first of all, I'm gonna zoom back out here for a moment. So <clears throat> when you swing out your your, your bed surface here. Uh, behind this shield is a cam. Now the cams are designed 
for stitch lengths. Okay, so you can get cams where the stitches are a lot closer together. You can get them where they're further apart. And they make a number of cams for these and they're still available. The, the cams are steel. There, there's no, no plastic going on here. They're, this cams are incredibly beautifully made steel and uh, you can still get them from Mero. So um, again, it just depends on what kind of uh, work you're going to be doing. So now I'm going to take this and notice where I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this here. So if I turn the machine on again, turn the motor on again, where are you, switch? Okay. Watch if I, if I keep sewing, it'll keep, you know, giving me a uh, length here of, of my thread. And then I'm going to cut it right here. So I can still come under. Everything is still working together. Now that was two layers. Let's see. We're going to add a third layer. You can see over here where the little, the, uh, the, uh, the blades have done their job to create a nice edge for us. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take on the other side, here's the piece, here's our, here's our surged edge, our marrowed edge. Now I'm going to come over here and we'll go to the other side. And again, the cloth will get trimmed. And what we're asking the machine to do is trim three layers and then stitch three layers. So again, we're basically doing a test here to see what the machine likes. You always want to do this before you purchase any machine. Not only are you testing the, the condition and the running ability of the machine, but you're also testing its ability on the type of project with the types of fabrics you're going to sew. And that's always a great idea. Let's see here. I'll lift up my pressure foot again, get my material set up, get the foot down, and we'll give it some juice here. Okay, once again, it has done the the trimming for us. And it looks like we've got three layers, guys. There's uh, two, I have three cones of thread here, two white and one green. Uh, I like to mix up the colors when I'm doing uh, test stitching here. It helps me see different, uh, different stitches, different parts of a stitch. Okay, and now Let's take a look at it up close. This is the three layers. I think that's the three layers. Yeah. You can see on the edge here, that's the green side. And then looks like didn't have my uh, cloth lined up here. I want my cloth lined up so it will cut all three layers. So let's go back. I'm going to cut off this stitch. We'll still have it as a record. We can still see it. So I'm going to cut this stitch here, or trim off the piece where this stitch was. And it's still going to cut uh, the fabric. It's still going to give us an edge. But they're a little more uniform here. So let's see what it does there with those three. Make sure I've got the camera in view for you guys. Sorry about that. Just going slow here, giving the machine time. You can see right here, this is the blade as it's coming up and down. Okay, let's see what we have. We've got three layers of the uh, oiled cloth here. You see this, this side of the edge, and then we'll come on this side, and you can see, and we've got, let's see if that, how that shows up. So that's three layers. I'm going to go ahead and see if the machine will play ball with us and do four layers. So what can I do here? I'm going to take, I've got another couple of scraps. 
I'm going to take these two scraps <clears throat> and what can I do here? I should pull back a little bit there for you guys. Okay. I'm going to trim this. This is one piece, so this will give us two. You know, this particular uh, motor is quieter than a lot of them. Some of them can be like chainsaws. It just depends on the motor and the speed it was set up for, I guess. Um, okay, so that's two. We've got two here. And I'm going to save save this sample. I'm, I want to keep that sample for uh, the, the person who set the fabrics. Um, this, by the way, from I can't. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. This is two layers of medium weight cotton with a seam, so that's four layers, and you can see the uh, the work it did here. That's a woven, and then over here I've got a, a knit. This was from a t-shirt knit, you know, stretch knit fabric. So these machines are quite versatile. Uh, hard to believe they were invented so long ago. Now, okay. So I'm going to put four layers together here. We'll try it with four and see what it does. I have no idea what it'll, what it'll do or say, but we'll find out. Okay. And since I don't know, I'll start out a little slower here. And you can see it cut four layers of the oil cloth. Not bad. Um, the blades were sharpened on a recent uh, servicing that the machine got. Now, <clears throat> you can see the little pigtail. Of, kind of interesting the way these, uh, these machines work. This is the, the sewing off of that. But here we go. Now, let's take a look. You can see this edge here, and then we'll flip it over, and then you can see on this side, you see the, the green. So apparently, um, at this weight and at this number of layers, the machine appears to be willing to stitch this material. And this is a kind of a great way to, uh, this is a great way to, to think about when you're looking at a machine, which is how um, willing is a machine to sew what you're going to sew. And you can't always base it on power. The, the motor that this machine runs on is quite powerful. And these machines are industrial. But you still want to ask that question, will it sew what I want it to? Uh, and that's really important. I'm going to put a flashlight here and see if... I've got natural light here, but it's... it's kind of let you guys see a little bit brighter so you can get a, a better look here. And you'll see the other side. Um, what you're, what you're, what you're trying to uh, experiment or test is essentially <clears throat> how many layers of any given material will a machine work on, uh, and then how dense is that material? I've got four layers. If this material was, you know, like heavy, heavy, you know, boat cover canvas, and we did four layers, it might not work on that, or it might. I don't know. I haven't tested it. I don't have that material handy. But whatever machine you have, whether it's an overlocker or not, be sure to try to test. If you're going to go look at a machine, take your own material. Um, sometimes people come to look at one of my machines and they forget. And I try to keep materials on hand. I don't have everything, but I try. Usually, you know, some old denim or canvas, uh, as well as medium, medium weight materials. Um, but for the times when you want something as secure as what is you know, a surged stitch, right, or an overlock stitch. These are, um, you know, some of the strongest stitches you'll have, and this is why these machines were invented. And it's really helpful to have when you're when you're in, like I say, so many 
uh, styles of sports where the people wear stuff you wear to the gym and to exercise in. Um, a lot of those products are made with knit fabrics, but whether or not, even, you know, this is a woven and these machines are designed to work on both. Um, but just keep in mind that uh, this type of stitch is very useful when you, when you, when you need extra reinforcement. Okay. And uh, you can see with the little, you can see all the looping <laughs> of the, of the stitch on this overlocker. Overlockers just fascinate me. They're really amazing. Uh, but anyway, uh, there were two of these. One of them has been sold, and then this one is currently still available. And um, it is it is an amazing piece of equipment. You have to you have to say. So if uh, I'll, I'll be sending this video back, uh, and uh, uh, so the client uh, can see it and see what they think, and then uh, I'll have it for you guys to watch. Since some of you may or may not have ever seen or had an interest in overlock machines in other parts of the world all of them both the industrials like this one and the home ones are called overlock machines the domestic versions but in north america they're called surgers and they often call it a surged edge some people call it a marrowed edge because the marrow company invented overlocks uh, machines a long time ago but anyway there you are guys uh she's been uh had her lint clean she's been oiled and uh, you can see it's always good to, like I say, try to see a demonstration of something. Okay, so this machine is in good working order. It has not had, it has not had a tear down. All of its parts have not been taken apart uh, or replaced. And so, you know, when you buy um, vintage industrial machines, unlike the domestics, you actually want to uh, maintenance is is important to have had because you typically will have. You'll have more more um, more likelihood that something wears in an industrial machine, whereas in a home machine, uh, that can happen sometimes. But honest to God, mostly home home domestic machines uh, take hours and hours for me to overhaul just because they sit; and they don't get used. So they have the opposite problem. But here you go, 1947 um, Merrow Company still in business. You still get parts for her, and uh, it's. Uh, it's really amazing. In fact, these machines don't weigh very much. Most industrials weigh a ton. I've had domestic home lock stitch machines that weigh more than this because it's actually a fairly small device. Now the table, you know, is much heavier. It's a industrial table with a with a clutch industrial motor. But um, anyway, just kind of wonderful to see something from the 1940s that the original company that made this is still making them. They still make machines in the United States and they keep parts going way beyond this model. Uh, really good to see. So anyway, for those of you who are interested in surging, as we call it in North America, maybe you've had a home or a domestic surger you like. Some people have them. They have, you know, they come in four thread versions, five thread versions, and maybe even more. The industrials do, and so do the home machines. But um, one of the advantages of a three thread overlocker is that it is simpler to thread. It's not as complex. Um, I don't think anyone would say any overlock machine serger is easy to thread and some of the domestics have those air system where they poof thread through tunnels and stuff. But this one is um, relatively, um, uh, relatively straightforward and there is a threading guide. Okay, so the uh, a threading guide comes with this and uh, Sure appreciate you guys watching. I don't make a video on something like this every day, but uh, we had some nice natural light, a lot of reflected light off the snow. We are in winter. Um, can't call it autumn anymore. But anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned. We will be bringing you more videos throughout the season.